Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, we're introduced to this new kind of magical ability. A legilimus. Someone who can read people's minds at will. Basically like Professor X from X-Men. And ever since the release of Fantastic Beasts, I've been obsessed with this ability and I've been trying to find other characters in the Harry Potter series with this same ability. Is Dumbledore a legilimus? Like honestly, that would explain a lot. Like how he knew not to trust Tom Riddle despite the fact everyone else at the school loved him and he was head boy. Is there something you wish to tell me? No, sir. Nothing. He seemed to always know what Harry was thinking. I don't! Harry screamed so loudly that he felt his throat might tear, and for a second he wanted to rush at Dumbledore and break him too. Shatter that calm old face, shake him, hurt him, make him feel some tiny part of the horror inside him. Then literally four paragraphs later, Dumbledore says to him, If you are to attack me, as I know you're close to doing, I would like to have thoroughly earned it. Yeah, Dumbledore isn't a legilimens. He knew Hagrid was innocent, and he also knew that Newt Scamander was innocent. Yet one of your teachers argued strongly against your expulsion. Now, what makes Albus Dumbledore so fond of you? So to answer your question, Grindelwald, maybe Dumbledore was so fond of him and argued against his expulsion because he knew he was innocent because he's a legilimens. But today I'm not going to be discussing how Dumbledore's a legilimens. He could have just, like, trained these powers. No. Today, I'm going to be talking about how Snape's mum. Snape's mum? Really? Hello there, how are you doing? Okay, I know what you're thinking. Who cares about Snape's mum? She's literally mentioned four times in the Harry Potter books. Trust me, I've counted. But just hear me out, okay? Some abilities, for example, being a metamorphagus. When Lupin's talking about his and Tonks' son Teddy, he describes him as not much hair. It looked black when he was born, but I swear it's turning ginger in the hours since, showing that Tonks' metamorphagus powers have been passed down. And much more obviously, being a parcel mouth, since all the Slytherins are parcel mouths, are shown to be inherited abilities, meaning they are passed down from one generation to the next. And I think it's very likely that being a legilimens is the same. Otherwise, I feel like we'd come across a lot more of them. Like, how many characters in the Harry Potter series can you actually name who are skilled with legilimency? There really aren't many. But anyway, as I've said, since the release of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, I've been looking for another example of someone who shares these abilities with Queenie and can read people's minds at will. And other than Voldemort and Dumbledore, the go-to person was Severus Snape. He is the one that Dumbledore chose to teach Harry the defense against legilimency, occlumency. Used properly, the power of occlumency will help shield you from access or influence. And he is powerful when it comes to occlumency, and I'm going to go as far as to say that he is the world's most powerful occlumens. Snape's unerring ability to conceal his thoughts and feelings from external penetration proved to be crucial for him. He managed to hide facts from Lord Voldemort, who is greatly considered to be the world's most powerful legilimens, such as his remorse for Lily Potter's death and his secret alliance with Albus Dumbledore. And at the end of the day, these were key factors that led to Harry's victory. Also, I want to make a point of how Dumbledore chose Snape to teach Harry occlumency, despite knowledge of their strange relationship. Why not pick Harry's head of house and the deputy head, Professor McGonagall. No, he chose Snape. Which implies that the other teachers aren't nearly as qualified as Snape to teach occlumency. Meaning, one, it's a rare skill, and two, no other teacher comes close to the level of mastery and talent Snape seems to have. This is probably a biased opinion, but I think when it comes down to it, Snape is more powerful than Lord Voldemort and Albus Dumbledore when it comes to legitimacy and occlumency. I think he's the most powerful we'd come across in the whole Harry Potter series. Until, of course, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them came out. Which is, of course, where we get introduced to the naturally gifted legitimacy Queenie Goldstein. You bake, honey? Uh... I love to cook. You're a legilimens. Mm, yeah. But I always have trouble with your kind. Brits. It's the accent. Queenie is so powerful with legitimacy in a way which we haven't seen before. She can see people's thoughts and is able to use her powers in the complete opposite to the way Snape described legitimacy to Harry. As he says in The Order of the Phoenix, the mind is not a book to be opened at will and examined at leisure. According to her actress, she's not reading what you're currently thinking, she's reading you. Being a legitimacy means she's reading your whole story. She's seeing all your truths. If she peers in far enough, she can go all the way down. However, these powers aren't perfect and can be resisted as J.K. Rowling confirmed on Twitter, Grindelwald, when disguising himself as Grave, kept her from seeing into his thoughts with his extremely powerful occlumency abilities. And these incredible legitimacy powers are, of course, all natural and basically all untrained ability. Again, to quote J.K. Rowling's Twitter, Snape had to train a slight natural ability. Queenie was born with great talent, though she's not infallible. And I think the key part of that statement is that Snape has 
slight natural ability. And that's got to come from somewhere. Meaning one of his parents also probably had some natural ability too. And since his father's a muggle, we have to assume this power came from his mother, Eileen Snape. Come on, Eileen. Snape is described as similar to his mother in the book. Snape stood beside him, slightly hunched next to a thin, sallow-faced, sour-looking woman who greatly resembled him. But all we really know about Eileen Prince from her school days was that she was captain of the Hogwarts Gobstones team. The picture showed a skinny girl of around 15. She was not pretty, she looked simultaneously cross and sullen, with heavy brows and a long, pallid face. Underneath the photograph was the caption, Eileen Prince, captain of the Hogwarts Gobstones team. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like the wizarding equivalent to being captain of chess club. And if my extensive watching of movies based in American high school serves me well, that will imply she isn't going to be the most popular student. She definitely seems more of a brainy student who aced all of her exams. And I wouldn't be surprised if she, like Queenie, was one of these natural legilimens and used these abilities to help her do well in school. And this would also mean that her son, Severus Snape, is also a powerful legilim, because he inherited at least some of his mother's ability, and this is his slight natural ability. And there are examples in the first three books of Snape using legitimacy on Harry without speaking an incantation, without using a wand in the same way Queenie does. Could Snape possibly know they'd found out about the Philosopher's Stone? Harry didn't see how he could, yet he sometimes had the horrible feeling Snape could read minds. Silence, said Snape coldly. What have you done with the car? Ron gulped. This wasn't the first time Snape had given Harry the impression he was able to read minds. Harry bit his lip. He did not know what had happened and didn't want to admit it, but Snape seemed to have guessed the truth. Trust me, next time you read through the books, look for examples of this. You will find more than three. And having a mother who's a legilimens wouldn't just explain Snape's slight natural ability in legilimency, but would also explain why he was so adept to learning about occlumens. It isn't even taught at school, so to learn it, you need a good reason to want to learn it, and, well, you need to know someone to teach it to you. And Snape being the reserved, secretive, stored-up person he was, you can 100% understand why he wanted to learn and occlumency. Especially if his mother is, as I suggested, a natural legilimen, so you can delve into his thoughts and find his deepest, darkest secrets with ease. Which just leaves the question, who passed the power on to Eileen? Who was Snape's natural legilimen's grandparent? And before we dig in looking for potential candidates, we need to talk time period. And according to Harry Potter Wikia, Eileen Prince was born in 1929. I can't for the life of me find where this is said in the books or on Pottermore. So personally, I don't know how reliable the Wikia source is. But it does fit up, and you'd presume she was born around then, because that would mean she was 31 when she gave birth to Snape in 1960. And that's a pretty normal age to have a child. So working off the fact she was born in 1929, can we think of any witches or wizards who were natural legilimens who'd have been in their 20s or 30s in 1929 who could have possibly been Eileen's parents? Dumbledore! Wait, no. That can't be right. First and foremost, we already know that her father's going to have the surname Prince because Eileen's surname is Prince and that will be passed down from her father. And I'm pretty sure it's been confirmed that Dumbledore's gay. But yeah, what if Snape's mystery grandmother is none other than Queenie Goldstein? It makes sense because, well, obviously these powers of legitimacy are very rare. I can't stress that enough. Out of all the characters we've come across in the Harry Potter series, she's the only one to be confirmed with that power. And this is a skill that can be learned and still only like five characters in the Harry Potter series are referenced using it. Not even Professor McGonagall, Professor Flitwick, Professor Sprout, or any of the other members of the Order, excluding Dumbledore and Snape, are shown to be using legitimacy or occlumency in the book series, let alone be naturally gifted. And if that doesn't prove how rare this skill is, I don't know what will. There is, of course, one glaring issue with this theory, that being that Eileen went to Hogwarts and Queenie lives in, well, America. However, we do know that Newt and Tina eventually go and get married and move to England and settle down in Dorset, which is a small little county in the south coast of England. I don't know if that's a spoiler for future Fantastic Beasts films, but that has been confirmed by J.K. Rowling. And if Tina moves to England, is it too much to expect that her sister and roommate Queenie might also move to England at some point in her life? Also, importantly, the name Prince isn't part of the Sacred 28, which are 28 British family names that are still considered pure-blooded. Meaning the so-called Mr. Prince, who was presumably a pure-blooded Slytherin, won't be obliged to marry one of his cousins like most other Slytherins. Also meaning that there's a good chance he didn't meet his future wife at Hogwarts, because most girls in Slytherin wouldn't be allowed to marry him in fear of being accused of being a blood traitor. And this is why I think it would make a lot of sense for him to fall in love with Queenie if she were to move to England. Which again is a huge possibility since Fantastic Beasts 2 is taking place in England and France. So she'll have to be there or thereabouts if she's going to be included in the sequel. And maybe, just maybe, we'll witness the birth of Eileen Prince in Fantastic Beasts 2. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
The only real downside to this theory is that if it's true, it means that Queenie and Jacob don't end up together. And that's a real shame, because who doesn't ship them? But then, let's not forget that it's illegal for the two of them to be in a relationship in America. And Jacob seemingly has a pretty good business running now. But if you don't like my theory because of that, fair enough, I understand. There is another theory suggesting that Lita Lestrange is his grandmother, which I'll leave a link to in the description below, because I used it to help me write a lot of this theory, and it's really well researched, and to be honest, it makes a lot of sense. The only downside to that theory is that Lita Lestrange is black, and I just don't really know how the genetics will work there, but you never know. Again, there'll be a link to that video in the description below. And before you go, if you enjoyed this video, I 100% guarantee you will love this video. This is like the best Harry Potter theory on my channel. Check out my other social medias in the description below, make sure to leave a like, click subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Come on, this song has literally been stuck in my head this entire video, I don't think you understand! <laughs>